Good morning, welcome to the Vineyard, everybody. It is Super Bowl Sunday, February the 7th. I hope you have a big, amazing, awesome plans with family and friends, whether you're gathering, watching the game, eating, you're there for the commercials, you're there for the halftime show, whatever it might be. I hope that you will have an awesome Sunday afternoon, but we're so glad you've chosen to make the Vineyard part of your weekend, a part of your Sunday. Would you do us a favor and reach out in the chat room and chat with uh, those that are watching with you today? Would you uh, check in on Facebook? Facebook, maybe take a selfie and let us know that way and tag the church in. And we love knowing how and why you're watching uh, this weekend. We also love it when you text us and give us your name and your email. When you do that, you get on all the church's communications about what's happening in the life of the body of Christ here in Bloomington Normal and the surrounding cities. As we engage Jesus, we worship today. As we engage, you know, our students with purposeful programming. As we engage our adults in, in Purposeful groups. We engage uh, our cities with outreach. As we engage our world, guys, with Jesus' love and good news, we think that God's got a great plan and destiny for you to be a part of all of that. And we're so glad you found us online this weekend. So let us know you're here. Text us. Give us your name and email. Chat. All the things. Um, because it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day of worship. It's going to be a great day of teaching. It's going to be a great day of you and I meeting Jesus in a fresh, new, and hopefully life-giving way. All right, friends. Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to engage in worship. So would you guys welcome our band to the stage and let's all sing together wherever we're at, whether we're watching on our phone, our computer, uh, through YouTube, on our TV. Uh, just stand up wherever you're at and engage in worship with us right now. Let me 
not forget you And I'll sing of all you've done And I've been swallowed up forever By the fury of the love you stepped You stepped into my region And you took me by the hand And you marched me into freedom And into the promised land Now I will not forget you, God I'll sing of all you've done Death this swallowed up forever By the fury of your love So you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah Hallelujah You have torn apart the sea You have led me to the
back everybody uh, what an amazing trailer i hope you're excited about miracles miracles starts next sunday february the 14th uh we just decided to make valentine's day an amazing day um it's gonna be an amazing day because maybe you're celebrating with your spouse or celebrating with your loved ones how much you care about them but here at the vineyard we're gonna be celebrating by starting that awesome miracle series which i cannot wait to bring to you as we explore the life of jesus in another way this year but beyond the miracle series we're calling next weekend back to church sunday what do we mean by that well here in Bloomington Normal and in Central Illinois, a lot of things are beginning to get back to normal. Our schools are starting to open back up. Uh, the older students are going back part-time. Uh, the younger students uh, are going back every single day of the week. Our restaurants are beginning to open back up. Um, our families are being able to go out to eat again. It is an amazing thing to see almost a year into uh, different mitigations and tears and all the things. But we are uh, getting back to normal. We want to encourage some of you who have been a part of our online community especially, that maybe this is a back to church weekend for you. Or maybe you've been a part of our life service a lot, but you haven't really recommitted to a week in, week out thing. We want you guys to do that. Or maybe you haven't been uh, real excited about inviting somebody to join you because you've been worried about the different tiers and things like that. This is what we're calling February 14th. We're going to call it Back to Church Sunday, where we just want to encourage everybody to re-engage in worship in the live experience. Re-engage 
uh, in a way maybe you haven't for a very long time. If you're still kind of nervous, uh, you know, come in and sit in the back, get socially distanced. We have uh, plenty of chairs, plenty of room for everybody to socially distance in the in the building. We also uh, encourage you, if you are still feeling super nervous, wear a mask. That does not bother us at all. We have people every single weekend that wear a mask to our services. And so, guys, come and re-engage in Back to Church Sunday. Re-engage with our Miracle Series. It's all going to start next weekend, February the 14th. We'll still be online, but we'll be live at 10, 11, 15, and we'll be online on YouTube and Facebook as well. So that's my first announcement. So my second announcement is this. February the 28th, which is in just a few short weeks, believe it or not, February the 28th, right here in this room, we'll be having our next Increase in Worship Night. It's one of those evenings where we give a lot of space for more music, for more ministry prayer, uh, for us to experience God and His Spirit in a fresh, new way, a way for us to engage Jesus in really deep, heartfelt worship. Uh, my wife, Corey, will be preaching that night. She's going to have a great message for us. We're going to have an incredible time. It's February the 28th at 6 p.m. here at the Bloomington Normal Vineyard. Uh, we might even film some of it and show it later to those of you that are unable to make it live that night. But those are the big things coming up. February the 14th, our Miracle Series launches with a Back to Church Sunday. February the 28th, an increase in worship night. And guys, we're able to do all of those things because of your amazing generosity. The generosity that you have towards our communities of your time, your talents, and your treasure. As we engage our world with Jesus' love and good news, uh, engage our cities, guys, as we do those things, um, and we do it all because you guys have been so generous to this place. And we want to celebrate what you have poured into this place over the last year. As you've loved and led well, as you've given up your resources to this place, we've been able to reach more people, both online and live, than we ever have in the, the first four years of our church. In, the, in this fifth year, guys, we've just experienced Jesus us in amazing ways as we hit our 50th baptism this year, as we announced our first church plant this year, as we saw our youth group double in size this year. You know what? All of it was because you guys were so generous and we cannot thank you enough. Let me pray over our offering and then we'll talk about how you can give this weekend. Father, in Jesus name, you have been so generous to us and because you've been so generous to us of your love, of your grace, of your resources, we pour back into your kingdom right now, God. We pour back in of our time, our talent, and our treasure, Lord Jesus, to see lives get transformed, to see people come to know you for the first time, to see students come to engage you for the first time, to see adults find community in small groups for the first time. God, we give back so that people's lives will get transformed. And God, we are partnering with you to engage our cities, and we're so grateful for your generosity to us. And God, as a church, I am so grateful for every man and woman and teenager and child who donate so generously to this place. In Jesus' amazing name I pray. Amen. Amen, friends. Well, the easiest way, vineyardbloomington.com. Uh, the, the website's there at the bottom of the screen. Click on the give button. You can give towards um, our tithes and offerings. That's the general front of the church, the stuff that just does the daily operations of this place, uh, you know, salaries and programs, all those kinds of things. There's also a place in there you can click on an increase in the building fund that helps, uh, you know, us pay off the mortgage of this place. Uh, you can click on an increase in church planting and missions, which helps with things like sending Lord and Andy to South Carolina in 2022 you can uh can click on the increase in thanksgiving or a holiday offering that goes towards supporting uh the poor in our community so anything you want to give you can set up a one-time gift you can set up a recurring gift you can do what i do and i just have it taken directly out of my check so that um, it goes right to the church right at the beginning of the month and, and do whatever makes the most sense for your family Okay, that's all the announcements, that's all the things, that's all the details. I hope that you are as encouraged and excited about this weekend as I am because kind of bittersweet, but the last Sunday in our Words Matter series, we have gotten amazing feedback about how people have learned to be more kind and more patient, to, to bless and not curse, to encourage and not complain, to speak truth and not lies, to see others in their identities, guys, instead of gossiping about them. We, we've got such tremendous feedback about how this is reshaping the speech of, of, of people within the life of our church, and I hope it's doing the same for you. And so, uh, Corey, this weekend is going to do her best to bring all of those ideas together and talk about how it brings unity to the church when we speak out the way that we can speak out. So guys, would you welcome my amazing wife, Corey, to wrap up our series, Words Matter.
Well, good morning. I'm so glad that you are joining us online this morning. Gosh, it's been a real intense and interesting time the last 11 months, hasn't it? Oh, and for all of us feelers out there, or impact people, wow. Oh my gosh, wow. I want to give you a little bit of insight on me. Uh, in my Clifton Strength Finders uh, profile, which uh, Clifton Strength Finders is really similar to those of you who might have taken like an Enneagram or a uh, Myers Briggs profile uh, test or like, you know, survey or whatever you want to call it. But uh, here at the church, we use uh, Clifton Strength Finders and I also use it whenever I refer to my state. But my top number one strength in Clifton uh, Strength Finders is harmony. So, you know, this year has been kind of one of those years for me, but harmony, and I want to tell you a little bit about that profile and how I function. So people with harmony value peaceful relationships where everyone is considerate to one another and respect each other's opinions. I know, right? Uh, this means that us people with the strength of harmony look for areas of agreement for people. We, we want to see that people can come to agreement on anything and we are very uh, aware of conflict and inharmonious uh, situations. Like when I walk into a room, I can tell if there's tension in the room. And trust me, it is not always the best way to live. But we can feel it. Uh, we don't enjoy conflict. In fact, rather, we seek areas of agreement even when we know people are arguing or in conflict. We want to bring them together so that they can work together so that everybody is at peace. So we actually believe that people can work on things to come to agreement together. And we actually can see it in our mind's eye of how it will work when people come together in agreement. So it drives people like me to seek peace and a common ground and cooperation among people. So this year has been really, really, really difficult for me. Why? Because I haven't been able to fix anything that's been going on in the world. I haven't been able to get anybody together uh, that have been on opposite sides or complete oppositions of each other to work together. I want, I want to see complete agreement. And so when things are going on and I can't get people to agree, it just like really hurts my spirit almost. And if you felt in agreement with me as I, I talked about this strength, then I want you to know that you are not alone that there are other people out there just like you. Blessed are the peacemakers, right? On the other hand, this particular strength, like all strengths and giftings, has a dark side. I know, right? But yes, yeah, sometimes we go to the dark side, and this dark side typically is that if we cannot get people to agree on anything, and we can't get people to meet eye to eye after trying, we just walk away from the situation and say, you know what, forget you all. We don't need to work together. We're just gonna leave it the way it is, and you guys can figure out your own mess yourself. Like we just get, we get to that place where we're just like, whatever, we just give up. I, this gift also, the dark side is, is that we just don't like drama. Like, so if you, if you know me, if you have had any conversations with me or if you've met me before, I am not a person that enjoys drama. Um, I am a straight shooter and I just kind of want to get things out there, you know, out in the open because I believe when we do things like that, we can find some kind of common ground. So the dark side is though, is that when us people with harmony behave like this, we're actually not helping anybody come, come to a common ground or come to a, a common point where everybody can kind of find some kind of agreement or even agree to disagree, right? That's even a way. Okay, so why am I talking to you about my harmony strength? Well, today we're going to actually be talking about unity versus, uh, unity versus division and how our words can actually bring unity or cause division in the church family. And believe it or not, uh, I can actually say that my strength, harmony, can see this a lot, and especially as a church leader, I see it all the time. We don't realize how destructive division is, and at the same time, we don't realize how powerful unity in Christ is. It doesn't mean that we all think the same way, but rather that we can come at things at a different, from a different point of view, and we can have allowances from one another. And a lot of times in the church, we hear that we have to be unified. And, we, and if we're not, there's going to be division. 
But I want to challenge you with this idea today. This is one of my big ideas. Unity is not uniformity. But instead, unity is centered around the person and the idea of Jesus. Over the last six weeks, we've been exploring that our words matter. We've, we've decided and we've, we've talked about how they matter and how uh, that they can affect ourselves and the people that we talk to and when we use them. Uh, we, we've talked to you about how our words have authority and a power uh, to change the atmosphere around us. And Adam kicked off our series talking about how God cares so much about the words that his kids use because his wor your words have um, the power that can affect our salvation and the salvation of others. And if our words aren't kind and patient, we have the potential to cause division. And then we work, uh, and then I opened up, talked about how we get to look at how our words bring blessing or curse over people's lives. And then our words have to authority to actually change uh, the influence of our world around us in our relationships. And that the whole goal of speaking life over people is to see people and affirm people in the way that the Father sees them. You see, if we curse and we don't bless, our words can lead to division. On week three, uh, Adam challenged us again uh, to, to think about whose voice we were listening to on a daily basis. Are we listening to the voice of the Father who is who is truth and he's the author of truth are we listening to the devil who is the father of lies and if we if we if we were encouraged to remember that we are made in the image of god we are blessed with the authority of god and we are not just good but we are very good and that when we stop believing these three truths about ourselves that's when the deception comes in and if we speak lies over our lives and the lives of others it can cause division. Week uh, four, we were encouraged to always be joyful, to pray continuously, and to be thankful in all circumstances. And we all know how that hard can, that can be. Because when we put all these things into practice, we get to release things into our world that can change the atmosphere. And then we get to take those actions and those experiences that we are having, and we get to give that away to other people so that they can begin to have joy, to be live in a thankful environment, and, and to be thankful in all circumstances. Because if we choose to complain over choosing to encourage, it will cause division. And then last week, Adam talked to us about honest dialogue and how it should all start with how Jesus sees people. And that we put a huge emphasis on the fact that we want to see those people through their identity, their personality, and their destiny of how God sees them, how God created them. And when we do this and we put them, we start viewing people through these, these three things, we actually begin to have unrestrained conversations and we're intentional about how we speak to people. See, if we choose gossip and slander, it will lead to division. So why unity versus division? Because we believe that words are powerful and that they can actually divide a church or encourage a church and its people. Listen to what Titus 3, uh, 3.10 says. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and second warning, and then after that, have nothing more to do with them. I actually think that Titus was a harmonizer in that, in that moment. Makes me kind of proud. How many times have we heard in the church, little dis, uh, churches split over disagreements because they can't agree on the type of worship music that should be played on a Sunday morning? Or maybe the fact that there's not donuts in the foyer, or there should be donuts in the foyer. Or maybe because they can't agree on the color carpet, or somebody doesn't like the color carpet, or the paint walls. Now, I know that not all churches divide and split over silly things like this. And I know that some churches split over more serious issues. But here's what I want us to think about today. Is this really the, heart, the Father's heart for his church is division? I don't think so. See, disagreements are going to happen in a church. Why? Because we're all different people. We all think differently. 
But how we handle division and how we handle disagreements is important to the vitality of the family. How we handle these situations is what's really important. And the big idea, that one of the big ideas I want to challenge us with, today, with us today is that when we see the big C church, when we see the big C church with all the different denominations, I want us to see that we are all part of the body of Christ. And we, we really believe here, even at the Vineyard, that if we are not the church for you, then we will help you find a church that is. Because we don't want to be in competition with other churches. Because we believe that we all have different parts and different things that we are doing to add to the body of Christ. There's no competition. There's no room for competition within the body. However, let's be honest. Let's really be honest here. For over the last 2,000 years, there hasn't been a whole lot of unity towards the common goal. Right? We know that there's been, in the church world, that there is, you know... Uh, doctrinal differences, that, and there's been name calling and finger pointing, there's been uh, slandering and misreputation, uh, res- misrepresentation, there's also character assassination, there's heretic burning. I mean, all of these things have happened over the last 2,000 years in the church world and in the Big C church. And just like in any relationship, these things are going to cause brokenness. And division. I don't know if you guys, if any of you followed uh, any of the prophetic people over the last couple of months and even the last year. Um, and I, I really kind of I feel bad for these people because uh, they they've had to apologize sometimes for missing things, and they've come out and they've apologized for it. And I want you to hear this: I am not uh, promoting any certain platform or any political idea. All I'm trying to say is that. When they have come out to apologize for missing it, church leaders have come out against them and called them names. They've slandered them. They have basically called them heretics for not getting things right or apologizing. They've called them weak. They've they've finger pointed. They've done all of these things. And my thought and challenge for this is, is as people look at church leaders doing this to other church leaders, What does it actually tell people about the church? All it tells people about the church is that we're no different than than the world. So why would we want to be part of, why would they want to be part of a faith where people look no different than the people that they encounter on a daily basis? See, our words matter. Our words matter. What we say to people matters. How we engage people matters. How we represent Jesus matters. Unity within the family, within the church family, matters. Did you know that we all have different experiences, different experiences with our own personal faith, that those experiences can actually unite us? Why? Because we are all united in one faith. We are all united in one baptism, and we are all united in one Father. See, unity is not uniformity, but instead unity is centered around the person and the idea of Jesus. Our common goal is to lift up the name of Jesus, but that doesn't mean that we all have to do it the same way. Think about a Sunday morning during worship service. Some people might raise their hands and encounter the Holy Spirit and Jesus this way. And some people might just sit in their seats or or stand during worship with their eyes closed with their hands in front of them. We all encounter the presence of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit differently. And that is what is the beautiful thing about the church. Today, I'm going to look at Ephesians 4. And so if you have your Bibles or your Bible app or your phone or wherever and you want to go get it, please go do that. We're going to, we're going to go to Ephesians 4. We're going to start in verse 1. And I think this is really going to help us understand how important unity and differences are within the church. Okay, so Ephesians 4, verse 1. As a prisoner of the Lord, I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank given to you in your divine calling. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love towards one another, especially those who may try your patience. Okay, I'm going to stop here for a moment. 
we all have those people in our lives. We all have those people in our lives that are going to try our patience, whether you're inside the church wall or outside the church wall. But Paul is imploring us to be demonstrating gentleness and generous love towards one another. Okay, verse 3. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. Being one body and one spirit, as you were called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. For the Lord God is one, and so are we. For we share in one faith, one baptism, and one Father. Okay, prior to chapter 4, Paul has spent three chapters spelling out in detail all that God has done for us freely. Freely by his grace, all the things that God has done for us. Now, what is Paul doing in chapter 4? He kicks it off by he calling us into unity within the body. He said, God has done so much for you, and he's bestowed so much grace on you. Now, it's time for you to get along and work together. That's basically what he's saying. See, I think in order for us to do this, we have to understand our identity, and that's the key to us operating within the church family. See, when we understand our place, we can operate, it helps us operate in grace. When we understand who we are in Jesus, when we know our identity and, and how he's gifted us, we can operate in our family and use our words to encourage and build other people up. God has chosen us. And because he's chosen us, we are representatives of his on earth. So because of this truth, we have the great honor to be sons and daughters in the kingdom. And we are, when we're rooted in our relationship with him, we get to partner with him in humble, in, to being humble and gentle and patient, understanding and peaceful in our everyday lives. That's those fruits of the spirit that we talked about in week one, remember? We talked about if we're rooted in those places, and we are rooted in the kingdom, and we are rooted in the Father, those gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, those, those things will be rooted, and they will come forth in our lives. See, people are watching you. I know that sounds super creepy, right? But people are watching you. They're watching the way that you are interacting with people. They're watching how you're engaging with people. They're watching how you are speaking to people. They're watching how you use your words. They're watching how you speak about other people. They're watching you because they want to know that you are different than what they're seeing out in the world. That's what draws them into relationship with Jesus when they see something different. See, unity, though, in the body of Christ doesn't just happen. It just, it just doesn't like magically happen. We actually have to work at it. Why? Because we are all uniquely gifted from the Father differently. Which means we all do things differently. We all see things differently. And we all experience things differently. But we can have unity because of, of this. What? We are common in Jesus. We are common in the one. We share one body and we share one spirit. We have one hope of our calling, one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And each of these common areas, areas is greater than any potential difference that we might have. See, it's key for us to realize that our speech as a body, the spirit, our hope, uh, our baptism, our father is what brings unity within the body. That's what brings us together in unity. All other, other conversations that are ones that, that don't need to have uniformity. As long as we are united in the one body, the one baptism, the one Father, and the Spirit, we will be united. And division is actually caused when we disagree on these things that are listed in Ephesians 4. That's when division happens. And the root of the divisions actually start when we, when we uh, call it, we can start all this stuff to talk about in Ephesians 4. Like, if we don't agree in the Spirit, if we don't agree uh, about what, who the Father says people are, if we don't agree... Uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, or just in water baptism, those were those where those divisions can begin. See, unity is not the same as uniformity. Unity actually means that we get to appreciate others because they experience something differently than us. We get to learn from other people. That's how we grow. 
We get to see the unique giftings that the Father has for them. And we get to learn how to interact with the Father so that we can have another perspective which can help us uh, thrive as a church family. We need everyone's different personalities and giftings to unite the church. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 8. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of the word of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit gives the gift of the word of revelation of knowledge. And to another, the Spirit gives the, the gift of faith. And to another, the Spirit gives gifts of healing. And to another, power to work miracles. And to another, the gift of prophecy. And to another, the gift to discern what the Spirit is speaking. And to another, the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues. And to another, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these different gifts as he chooses for each believer. Our church family is made up of so many different types of people here in the, in the auditorium and of, of you guys watching online. We are made up of different types of gifts. We are made up of different types of abilities. And the, but the one thing that we all have in common is the faith in Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And it's the essential truth that our church finds unity in. That our church here finds unity in. That we, we all find unity in the fact that we love Jesus and we love the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. But I'm going to reread verse 11 again. Because I think it is actually the key to our unity. 11 again. This is what it says. Remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these different gifts as he has chosen for each believer. Our unity is in, in, in about one Holy Spirit, but there is not uniformity. Remember, you saw in 1 Corinthians, the Holy Spirit gives different gifts to everybody. It's not uniformity on how he gives us gifts or how we, he uses, uh, how we use his gifts or how we even participate in his gifts. The unity is in the spirit, not the actions, okay? Paul continues to unpack this idea of, uh, of how the church is functional as a body, but with many parts. So we're going to pick back up in verse 12 in 1 Corinthians still. Just as the human body is one, though it has many parts that together form one body, so too is Christ. For by one spirit we are all immersed and mingled into one single body. And no matter our status, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. See, there it is again. The Holy Spirit's uniting everybody again. In fact, the human body is not one single part, but rather many parts mingled into one. So if the foot uh, were to say, since I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of the body, it's forgetting that it is still a vital part of the body. And if the ear were to say, since I'm not an eye, I'm not really a part of the body, it's forgetting that it's still an important part of the body. Okay, honest talk here. This is real honest. A lot of times as a church leader, we see this begin to happen, and divisions start to happen, when the body starts to grumble or complain, when they can only see the one thing that they're doing. So like... If they can't see anything past the fact that they're an ear, or they can't see anything past that they're a hand. For example, they can't see anything past uh, preaching or worship or um, you know working in the next generation ministries or prophecy or healing or uh, prayer ministry. Uh, they can't see past uh, women's ministry or men's ministry or small groups. You get the idea. People start to grumble and complain when they're only focused on the one area that they're working in and they forget that there's a whole body around them that's working together to unify the church to make everything happen. Unity is one spirit, one father, and one Jesus who empowers us, but the church needs multiple parts, not uniformity. Okay? We think that we should have uh, we think that we should have the same gifts and that everyone in the church should operate the same way. But that's not what the Holy Spirit does. He gives us all different gifts so that we can all come together and use our gifts to be united in the Holy Spirit 
so that we can all go do the things that need to get done in the church and be part of the church family. And that's where that's where we stay focused on the same when we say when we begin to stay focused on the same aspects of where we're stuck at or what we are only good at. That's when the grumbling begins, and that's where our words can begin to cause division. Listen to how Paul wraps up this idea at the end of chapter twelve. But some of our body parts don't require as much attention. Instead, God has mingled the body parts together, giving greater honor to the lesser members who lacked it. He has done this intentionally so that every member would look at the others with mutual concern. And so that there will be no division in the body. In that way, whatever happens to one member happens to all. If one suffers, everyone suffers. If one is honored, everyone rejoices. There is no competition within the body. So whatever happens to one, happens to all. The struggles and the joyful moments are all ours. Every, all of it. And as believers, we are baptized by one Holy Spirit into one body of believers. So when we say yes to Jesus, we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and he gives us those giftings, and then we're baptized into the Holy Spirit, and then we're baptized, baptized into the one body of believers. So our, our oneness in Christ does not destroy our individuality. All right, just because we're one in Christ, that does not believe that does not mean that we're no longer individuals that are uniquely made by Him. When we we become a follower of Jesus, the Holy Spirit moves in, and we become His home. And then we've all received the same Holy Spirit when we said yes to Jesus. Think about it this way: Adam, when he said yes to Jesus, just like I did, received the same Holy Spirit that I did. However, Adam did not receive the same gifts that I did when he said yes to Jesus. The Holy Spirit gave Adam different giftings, right, than the giftings that I receive. And yet, we're both still important in the body of Christ because we both use our giftings a different way. I want you to look at this picture really closely, okay? See, all the flowers in this picture, they're different. They even have different colors, and they're even they're even different types of family of uh, uh, different types of flowers, but their root systems are all rooted in the same place, right? They, they're intertwined, and they are unified in the dirt for growth. Like those those roots have to intertwine; they rely on each other so that they can grow with the sun and water. But their root systems are connected. They're dependent on each other for growth. That's how it's supposed to work in the kingdom. We all look like different flowers. We all may have different colors or even a different type. But when we're rooted in the soil together, our root systems intertwine and look the same because we're rooted in the same Holy Spirit. We're rooted in the same faith. We're rooted in the one baptism. We're rooted in Jesus. And when we're all rooted in the same, it, it, that's what connects us, and that's what unifies us as a body. Okay, unity is not uniformity. But instead, unity is centered around the person and the idea of Jesus. This is our common goal. This is our common ground. You see what I did there as a harmonizer? I brought us all back to a common goal, right? A common ground that we can all agree on. I'm using my strength. I didn't run away this time. See, when we're unified in our relationship with our Father, there's actually no place for division. When we focus on Jesus, there's no place for division. When we are unified in the Spirit, there's no room for division. When we operate in our God-given identity, our God-given personality, and our God-given destiny, there, and use our words to call things out and, and those things out in others, we, there's no room or place for division. All right. I have a challenge for you. This is my challenge for you today. And this is how we're going to end. I would love for you to go to somebody that you're familiar with or you might not know as well. And we're going to do an activation called When I Look at You, I See. And I know that some of you might be at home watching this by yourself. And that's okay because I want to challenge you to do this 
this week in your workplace or if you're at the grocery store, I want you to speak the first word that comes to mind when you look at a person or you look at an individual. And when you do this, you might look at you, you know, I'm gonna say, uh, I don't see you face to face right now, but I'm gonna say, Amy, when I look at you, I see strength. I see strength and I see beauty and I see all the gifting that God has given you with creativity and how you interact with people. And he's given you all of these creative outlets uh, to use the giftings that he's given you. And he's so blessed by how you use the gifts that he's given you. Right, so that was just uh, an example of how we do when I look at you, I see. I was given one word, I felt one word drop into my spirit, and then I spoke out from that word, and then more came. And so I want you to do that within your own family units this weekend, or if you're out and about in the public, if you're going to do your grocery shopping, or if you are at work, uh, I would love for you to do this with somebody that you know. Just walk up to him and just say, hey, so-and-so, when I look at you, I see, and then speak a word that comes first to your mind, and then see what the Father does to build encouragement and to use your words for encouragement for somebody else this week. All right, so that's how I want to end. I want to challenge you with that. And I would love for you guys to message me. Uh, you can Facebook message me. You can text me. You can text the church or whatever. And let me know how it goes. Because I want our words to start unifying our family. All right? I love you guys. I'm going to pray, and then we're out of here. All right, Jesus, I just thank you so much uh, for the men and women that are watching uh, this week online, Father. I just pray that uh, we can be encouraging with our words this week, God, that when we see people, that you will give us words, even if it's just one word, God, that we can go off of and that we can encourage, God, so that our words can unify our family. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, what a day. Powerful worship, amazing worship, lots of good information, lots of generosity, lots of wisdom from Corey in that final message. I hope you're encouraged by it. Hope you're blessed by it. I hope it's making a difference in your life. And if your life right now is in a place where you're like, I need prayer. I need prayer for the things going on in my life. I need prayer for um, brokenness in my physical body, brokenness in my relationships, brokenness in my family, brokenness in my job. If something doesn't feel like it is the fullness of the kingdom in your life, reach out in the chat group, text the number that's right here at the bottom of the screen and say, hey, could you pray for me? Give us your, your name, your email. That's the best way. Um, and somebody from our team will reach out to you, pray with you, encourage you. Invite Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do, and that is to change your current situation and perform a miracle for you. So guys, reach out for prayer this weekend. Um, it's a big part of what we believe as a church is that we don't just come to engage Jesus for a few minutes, but we engage him every day. And when we engage him in prayer, what we see is our life really does get changed. So reach out for prayer. Um, if you're looking for a way to connect, one of the things that we're doing right now is launching a lot of online classes at our church. We have a connect class. We have a communicate with God class. And just this past weekend, we launched a, a new class called Calendaring for a Healthier You. If you jump onto the website, and, and click on the, the online campus, you'll see all the online options for small groups and for independent study classes. And we'll have more to come, but we encourage you jump on the, the chat, or excuse me, jump on the channels there, um, watch the classes, fill out the surveys, grow into the best person that you can become as you engage Jesus in a fresh way. And we had an amazing, amazing weekend talking and engaging with you this Sunday. We'll love you, friends, and we'll see you back either online or hopefully here live at church for our Back to Church Sunday. It's going to be an amazing, amazing launch to our Miracle Series. Bye.